What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out five WWE wrestlers who desperately need a push and five they need to stop. Well, yeah, we know some wrestlers that could benefit from a push and those that honestly they need to stop pushing. So we're gonna check out uh WrestleMania's list. Make sure you subscribe to him if you haven't already. A link to the original video will be down below. This should be an interesting one. Let's see what are some of the people he feel like should be pushed and shouldn't be pushed in WWE right now. And Triple H has brought back a lot of talent, making the WWE more competitive than ever for superstars searching for the spotlight. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at five wrestlers who need a push and five they need to give up on and five who need a fresh coat of paint. Oh, okay. And keep in mind, we're only dealing with singles wrestlers in this category and superstars on the main roster. Okay. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts, and our other channel, WrestleMania Hindi. This should be an interesting list. There are several wrestlers enjoying pushes to various degrees right now, such as Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, Solo Sokoa, and Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. However, these five need more of a push than they're getting right now. As number one, Raquel Rodriguez. Mm. It's baffling that Raquel Rodriguez hasn't been pushed further. While her ring work can be a bit clunky, her size and overall talent make her a natural for the women's division. Fact. Her biggest problem is that she's stuck on SmackDown, where your chances of being pushed are next to nothing yeah. unless your name is Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey, or Liv Morgan. Yeah. Number two, Damian Priest. That the is, of I like that. That I am in agreement with him on that one. R uh, Raquel Neff definitely needs to be pushed more in the women's division, higher up on the card, in my opinion. She definitely has the look and and uh the in-ring skill and ability to you know make it work so hopefully maybe she does get maybe she becomes money in the women's money in the bank winner i think that would be pretty good for her potential this year me started off strong in the wwe when he received a high profile match alongside bad bunny at wrestlemania but fell into the background until things picked up after joining the judgment day mm -hmm. whilst priest has worked many tag matches he could benefit from a singles push Number three, Rick Boogs. And it's crazy. I was just talking about that. I do feel like yeah, he's been more of the guy that's been mediating and talking a little bit more in Judgment Day. I do feel like even though he, even in my opinion, Rhea's really the enforcer of the group, I do feel like he's been more of the guy that's been keeping people together, you know what I'm saying, in a sense. It's not Finn Balor, in my opinion. I think it's, it's Damian Priest, and I've been enjoying his heel work as you know one of the guys that can get the job done you know he he's you know really smooth at what he says like you believe what he's saying like he seems comfortable in that role hopefully they uh, continue to push him as well rick booze stands out for his incredible physique and his incredible charisma despite questions about his ability to work against different opponents mm -hmm. boogs has the je ne sais quoi that could make him into an unlikely upper card or even main event star if he's presented properly yeah, on paper, on his act him. shouldn't work well as he's so ridiculously over the top, but somehow he makes it work. And with the right positioning, he could quickly break out towards the top. Number four, LA Knight. Ooh. LA Knight has quickly... Sh oh, yeah. This should have been number one. Man, he definitely number one on a lot of people's list. If he is not the money in the bank winner this year, I don't know what you're doing with him. He, That's the guy. They, the fans love him. People like him. Even though he's a heel... He, come on, come on, Some, something got to give. He needs a very big push this year, for sure. Shown he's 24 karat gold. The arrogant heel whose mouth writes checks his ass can't cash has gotten over quickly with the WWE Universe in no time at all after ditching the Albatross Max Dupree gimmick. Facts. Indeed, Knight may be wrestling's Mr. Teflon as seen by his dreadful program with Bray Wyatt where he came out smelling like roses. That doesn't mean the WWE should book him against anyone. Yeah. As good as Knight is as a heel, he seemed destined for an even bigger run as a babyface. Yeah. The WWE should stop preparing him for such a run. For and sure. And number five, Karrion Cross. Mm, very Pretty interesting. Pretty often point to Vince McMahon's treatment of Karrion Cross as evidence of how out of touch he is with fans, and point to Triple H's handling of Cross in NXT to suggest how the game knows what fans want. However, Cross's treatment on SmackDown has fallen far short of the mark, For sure. suggesting Triple H doesn't have the Midas touch he's often credited with. Mm -hmm. The WWE seems reluctant to put Cross into any title programs, which may be the case of timing. If so, it's difficult to explain why Cross's programs have been so lackluster so far, despite programs against Drew McIntyre and Rey Mysterio. 
but those are the wrestlers who need to be pushed. And that's definitely, uh, once again, this is a Triple H guy. It hasn't really panned out like we were hoping it would. So, yes, you can give Triple H uh, the L here because the Karrion Cross experiment has not worked. It's not bad, but they haven't really found something that really has the fans as interested as they should be in him. So, I don't know. We'll see where things can go. A good push with him could definitely help. Depending on his opponents, maybe switching them to Raw could, could possibly be the thing that they need to do. Because him on SmackDown, it hasn't really been working too well. But we'll see. I don't know. Who does Triple H need to put the pause button on? Now, WWE has several superstars who are being pushed harder than their talent or ability to resonate with the fans' warrants. In these cases, it's time to press pause on their pushes. There's number one, Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan Ooh. is a popular star who finally got a break when she won the 2022 Money in the Bank and successfully cashed it in against Ronda Very Rousey. Interesting one. As we pointed out in the past, the WWE deserves credit for giving Morgan a run, but she didn't succeed as a main eventer, partly because she didn't seem credible against Ronda Rousey and second because she is clearly lacking in the ring. Morgan makes too many mistakes to be competing at a top level. Her popularity makes her a good choice for a tag team run, but not the main event and not the upper card except perhaps for feuds. Mm, Number two, very Matt Riddle. Point. Unlike most, and here's the thing: I, I've said this before, and people came at me like I was hating, and I'm like, I'm not hating, bro. I think she's she's good in uh, the roles, you know, like more the mid card roles. But her as the the top of the women's division, it's, I don't see it. And granted, she's super popular, so that helps. Popularity is a part of it, so it helps. People want to see her, but I do think. Her being in a tag team division, even though it's not much of a division, it works. But her being at the top of the card, women wise, uh, is it, is she doesn't. I think you put Raquel in that spot, put her in that spot, kind of switch it out a little bit. I think that would be a better fit. But you know, so the wrestlers in the pool section, Riddle has the ring <sighs> skills and popularity to make him an upper card or even main event star. He shown he can work with a variety of opponents and work equally well as a goofy comedic character and a serious character. Riddle's problem is that he's undependable due to his activities outside the ring and until he's shown he's dealt with his personal demons, the WWE can't risk pushing him or continuing his current path. Well, we'll see Number three, how that Sonya Deville. Oh, Sonya Deville yeah. is pushed far out of her league, not because she's lacking in talent, but because she has been jobbed so much since returning from her role as an authority figure. Facts. Like Carmella, Deville always seemed to find herself in the women's title picture. Unlike Which made no sense because she, we know she's not winning. I don't know how many title opportunities this person has had. Which it it goes back to their the depth in the women's division on both brands is not that deep. Where you have, when you continuously have this same person lose and get jobbed out to these champions on both shows. I don't know. Like Carmella, she doesn't have the charisma or mic skills to annoy fans enough to want to see her get a comeuppance. Facts. Number four, Natalia. Ooh. Like Sonya Deville, Natalia is always found in the world title picture. Normally, that wouldn't be such a bad thing as the veteran can still go in the ring and is a classic example of a wrestling mechanic. Yeah. The problem is that Natty should be making room for other single stars and or putting them over. Her current role working as a veteran tag team partner alongside younger wrestlers is arguably the best role for her, but it's mm -hmm. unclear whether it's a temporary role or more of the WWE's inability to consistently book the blue brand's women's undercard. And number five, Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Does Ronda Rousey weird. belong in the main event? Well, that would seem to be a no-brainer. After all, yeah. Rousey is the baddest woman on the planet and could tie nearly any female superstar into a pretzel with ease. Facts. Nonetheless, her current singles run has been a bit of a snoozer. Rousey still can't cut promos, and she looks like she's sleepwalking every time she steps into the ring. Some fans might feel she's too much of a badass to be working as a single star, and they might be right. Likewise, some fans might feel Rousey's merely collecting a paycheck. Well, the WWE hasn't given her many credible opponents to work with, and yeah. when she did, the booking was usually awful. Whatever the case, Ronda shouldn't be pushed in the singles division because it's not working for her or opponents. She's hurting the main event, but what else to do? Thankfully, Rousey has solved this problem for fans by announcing she wants to team with Shayna Baszler. This could be the right fit for Rousey, and even if nothing else, it will keep her out of the singles division. But what about the... Yeah, um, the whole Ronda situation, I know she is trying to team up with Shayna and stuff like that. It's just this run, it just did not work, bro. Promo, she needs a, vo a, a microphone piece, because her promos are not it. Even whatever they're scripting her, it's still, it's... It, 
it's different when you come from the the MMA boxing world and you're trying to sell a fight because that's different. There's no script there. You're just talking your trash. Here, you kind of have to be able to talk your trash in a way that's entertaining because it's a promo. And she's not really good at that. It comes off bland, comes off don't really care. Like, this run was not it. Her first run, fantastic. Probably the best way they possibly could have booked her. This run, you just don't care for it. You don't. So where she's at right now is in a good spot. Granted, once again, there's not enough women in the uh, tag division. So who knows how long that'll last. Those who need a new coat of paint or a new gimmick. A Triple H seems to feel it's better to have a larger roster if for no other reason than to add depth to the undercard. As WrestleMania nears, fans should expect to see some releases after the showcase of the Immortals. While these next five wrestlers are expendable, they can contribute if the double- Hold on, I gotta see when was filmed. That's crazy, he says as WrestleMania nears. I guess he probably filmed this before WrestleMania, but he dropped it <laughs> like yesterday. WWE put some effort into booking them. There's number one, Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke seems to be lacking the it factor that makes a wrestler stand out, but it's still unknown if it's due to a lack of time in the spotlight. Brooke has the physique and technical skills to work matches, but really hasn't had any kind of push other than during her time in the 24-7 division in Eesh. 2022. She's shown the ability to be a supporting player in the mid card, but remains underutilized and at times ignored. Number two, really Tamina. I While Tamina's career may either. be winding down, she is a veteran who can make opponents look good and do so without hurting them. Tamina still has the size and strength to make a worthy foe, even if she's used to put others over for the most part. Number three, Shelton Benjamin. Mm. Getting rid of Shelton Benjamin would be a mistake, as Benjamin still has what it takes to go in the ring and no, he has years of experience go. to share with younger wrestlers. It wouldn't take much to elevate him from the mid card into a tag team contender if the WWE can ever figure out whether he and Cedric Alexander are a team. Yeah, which would be nice. They do need more tag teams. They could bring back Hurt Business. People want to see it. I'm just just saying. A run in the Hurt Business 2.0 could help, but only if he's a contributing member and not the group's weak link. Facts. Number four, Akira Tozawa. The WWE seem to think that ditching either. Tazawa's ninja gimmick would help him get over after years in the 24-7 division. Unfortunately, it hasn't, and the WWE needs to figure a role for him that yeah. plays to his strength despite his size. And number five, Jinder Mahal. <laughs> despite his shortcomings as WWE champion, the modern day Maharaja should be doing more in the WWE <laughs> than floating from one brand to another. His tendency to get hurt hasn't helped, but if he can stay healthy, he should be pushed. Does he need a gimmick change? A turn from heel to baby face? Well, Mahal isn't a diamond in the rough, perhaps, well, not even a diamond, but he is a gem that could benefit from some nah. serious polishing. <laughs> I haven't seen him what in you guys a while. Think? I don't Let know if I want to. <laughs> Jinder fucking Mahal. Stay with he. I don't know. I mean, if you're going to do something with him, you can have him be a heel. I mean, he, he, he works better as a heel. I can't buy Jinder Mahal as a fucking face. I don't think anyone cares enough to buy him as a face. I would keep him as a heel. Keep him as a heel. Keep him. Keep him. I don't know what he's doing. Last time I, I checked, I thought he was floating around in NXT. I don't know what he's doing. The la the the people that need a new fresh coat of paint. I don't know if you can help some of them. I'm be honest with you. <laughs> the rest of the list I can kind of agree with and work with, but the the people that may need a new fresh coat of paint, I don't know if you can help them. And be honest with you, they're too far gone for people to even want to care. I didn't. Even, I, I haven't seen. When's the last time anyone seen Dana Brooke or Tamina or whatever? Like they, you know, they're too far gone down the card to be salvageable. So comment down below. Let me know what are others, some other wrestlers you feel like should be pushed, some uh, wrestlers that you feel like should stop being pushed, and some wrestlers you feel like need a new coat of paint to potentially help them, uh, uh, you know, freshen up their character if they weren't listed already on this video. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K, and I am still. You know, the speed of YouTube, wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next time. Peace.